Hi everyone and welcome back to yet again another cold, grey and really windy garden. The leaves are just about hanging onto trees now and as you can see I've still got a lot of my big leaf plants out, we'll say enjoying the last of the autumn sun, but today they're certainly not enjoying it getting battered around. They will be coming in in the next couple of weeks, the gunnera will be cut down for winter and then the garden might look quite bare, or at least you think that anyway. But the truth is, there's so many different evergreen plants that you can use to create interest, colour, patterns, texture, everything you want in the garden, it can be there 365 days a year. And today I want to look at my five top picks, versatile evergreens that you can use in pretty much any garden to bring a touch of colour, a touch of structure to your garden in the winter months. So let's get cracking. So as a lot of leaves begin to fall, certain plants are cut down and brought inside and others are prepared for winter. It doesn't mean your garden has to look completely bare for the next six months, definitely not. And if it's your first year of growing an exotic style garden, you'll be pleased to hear there's lots of unusual evergreens that you can use to keep that exotic flair going through the winter months. And likewise, if you're just wanting some evergreens for your garden, no matter what the style, there's plenty of interesting choices out there without having to go to the same generic basket of plants that you see in every single supermarket car park. So the ones I want to show you today, they're quite adaptable, they generally can cope in a variety of conditions, but they're still something I want to grow, something that's got all the features that raise it above just a standard shrub with brightly coloured leaves. So let's get on to the first one. The first plant I want to share with you then is actually Mahonia and one that some of you might even be growing already but chances are if you're not you hear the word Mahonia and your mind straight away goes to those really tall sort of leggy plants that you see growing in supermarket car parks, council planting, those leggy plants with lots of trunks that wind up and spiky leaves sat on the top. Yes, they're technically evergreen and bring some interest to that plant in all year round, but I think they're more of a burglar deterrent than they are an actual attractive plant, in my opinion anyway. But soft caress, this one here, that answers a lot of those problems. Firstly, it doesn't get massively tall, it only grows around three or four foot tall, so it stays a nice attractive shrub. It looks prettier, these leaves, they've got a really fine cut to them, and to me personally, I think they go really well with palms, with bamboos, any of those plants. But equally, whatever the style of your garden, if you've got more deciduous plants mixed in, then this is a great plant that will grow alongside them well in summer, but keep that interest going through the winter months. It's got flowers, so the pollinators are happy, and that's, I suppose, an important thing about evergreens, that as well as providing interest for you, they can provide something, a form of food, for lots of other creatures in your garden, at times of the year when there isn't a lot available, which is really important. And the third thing, other than it being attractive and not growing too tall, is that it doesn't have spikes. So it's not the same as those vicious Mahonias that you'd never want to grow in a million years. This is a beauty. And if this one doesn't quite grab your fancy, there's others like Sweet Winter, which look even more incredible. So Mahonia Soft Caress, definitely recommended. It's an easy going plant that grow in a variety of places. So whether your spot's got a bit more sun or it's a little bit more shady, chances are this will be absolutely fine there. I think those Mahonias look absolutely fantastic planted in groups. But if you want something that's got a bit more drama, something with bigger, glossier leaves, then you can't go far wrong with Fatsias. And this one here getting blown around in the wind, this is actually a Fatsia japonica moseri, which is a smaller variety, more compact than Fatsia japonica, but in fact it's actually got slightly bigger leaves apparently. These amazing glossy leaves, and I think whilst Fatsia japonica are a common plant, I think, well, they deserve that good reputation. They're easy to grow, they thrive in a shady spot, they've got these amazing glossy leaves, and they're something that, for me, I grow a lot of different sorts in the garden here. I think they just add so much and they require so little. For that reason, they're absolutely fantastic. But if the standard plain green one maybe doesn't grab you, then there's plenty of other varieties you can get as well. Here in the garden, I've got lots, including spider's web, which is a really variegated form, with amazing white patterns on the leaves. And then there's this one here which is a Fatsia japonica variegata and those leaves I think they look absolutely incredible. So there's so many different kinds but they're all equally easy to look after. Yes the frost might nibble at the new leaves a little bit but the plants themselves they're really tough and they'll absolutely bounce back. And if you want something that's even weirder, something that's a little bit more out there then I can absolutely recommend Fatsia polycarpa. You might see it sold as green fingers or there's a couple of different versions but it's a fantastic plant. The leaves they look well, slightly different to the fact here, they've actually got a matte texture and they've got a slightly more cut shape as well, deeper divisions. I think those, they will absolutely fantastic paired with that soft caress. So that's my second plant. I don't think you can go wrong with Fatsias or Mahonias if you wanted an easy plant that'll grow pretty much anywhere. 
but from plants that do prefer a bit of shade to something now that prefers a bit more sun. Let's look at euphorbias. For a group of plants then that I've grown nearly 10 different varieties of, it's an absolute wonder that I haven't featured them in a single video this year. That's an absolute shame and one that needs to be righted today. Because the truth is, euphorbias, they're such a versatile plant, an easy to grow plant, and a plant that absolutely deserves its place in any garden. I think they're really attractive and they definitely hold their own in any kind of garden. So whatever style of garden you've got, whatever the conditions, chances are there's definitely a euphorbia for you. If you've got a shady woodland style garden, the smaller growing varieties that will do absolutely fine. And if you've got a Mediterranean style garden, then you're absolutely spoilt for choice. From a tall mellifera to other varieties like Frampton Fatty that do get big but spread quite low, I think they look absolutely incredible. If you've got a jungle style garden like mine here, then Euphorbia John Phillips, it's absolutely amazing. It grows so quickly. I bought a small plant from Grow Paradise this spring and it's sized up really nicely this year. And if you want to have a variety that absolutely delivers amazing flowers in spring, then Caracias wolfenii, it's absolutely incredible. It's got to be one of those spring flowering plants that's absolutely up there. It wouldn't be anyone's first choice if you had to name your best spring flower, but when you see a group of them in full flow in spring, they look absolutely incredible. So I think euphorbias are one of those forgotten plants, something that everyone tends to have at least one of in the garden. But the truth is, there's so many amazing varieties, it's definitely worth looking out there, seeing what's available, and adding another one to your garden. If you want colour, structure, and amazing visual impact in your garden, from summer through to early autumn, then plants like the Sidicium ginger, they're absolutely fantastic. But the truth be told, they only do the thing for half the year. Whereas euphorbias, they keep going all year round. If they're not flowering, you've got that foliage to look at. But in early spring, when they're really doing the thing, they capture this kind of vibe, but in a plan that will take any amount of cold, any amount of frost, and should be absolutely fine. So they're a really valuable plant, and no garden should be without one. So they're the three more mainstream choices out of the way. Let's look at something that might not be for every garden, but I think it's a really interesting choice next. So first off then, we looked at Mahonia soft caress. A nice low growing plant, well behaved, interesting foliage, very easy to grow. Then we looked at the Fatsias, potentially a bit bigger, there's interesting leaf varieties available, and they've all got that amazing glossy look to them. Then we looked at something that's got the potential to grow again a bit bigger, Euphorbias, there's so many different varieties, different styles, there's one for every garden. So coming up next, we've got a tree. A small tree and it's this here the strawberry tree arbutus unido now there is another variety a hybrid strawberry tree which i do also grow here i've got a very small plant and it's got the potential to have really interesting bags it grows up but this arbutus it's definitely a lot more available easy to get hold of at most garden centers and they're an amazing small tree with these glossy leaves now mine here this is one that i bought fairly recently and i will be doing a video as i plant it out soon but they're such an amazing small tree. You can keep them as a bush, let them grow more upright, and you can prune them to sort of reach anything in the middle, really. It says that they grow within 10 years to around three to five meters tall, but they can tolerate a lot of wind exposure, which is absolutely fantastic. They don't like cold wind so much, and they are more of a Mediterranean style plant, but in terms of absolute wind, they will be able to take a fair amount of it. So if you've got an exposed spot, that isn't really cold but just takes a lot of wind something like this is a fantastic addition there equally somewhere close to your house this is a plant that delivers value all year round and the main reason for that well let me just show you on the label so if i zoom in there you can see on that label look at those amazing fruits now unfortunately they're not actually strawberries and apparently they don't taste that nice but they look incredible and it also has amazing white flowers as well and both of those come around this time of year so like the euphorbias they're a plant that delivers amazing ornamental value at a time of year when there isn't a lot going on the birds like them as well apparently but when i say like they do prefer eating other tasty fruits first but there's still these fruits here ready for them at the end of winter so it's a plant that delivers a lot it can flower and have fruits at the same time as well as these amazing green leaves dark green glossy like the fats here the red stems i think the trees that give a lot of value so if you're looking for something to put in your garden to grow a bit taller to keep that sort of interest going vertically then i think a strawberry tree is an absolutely fantastic choice 
Plant number five then, it's a bit of a controversial one. It's a bamboo. Now, it's not actually one that's right behind me. This one isn't the most frost hardy bamboo, but one that I grow for these amazing looking leaves that comes this beautiful blue color. I think they're absolutely fantastic. But the plant I want to recommend as my first choice bamboo is Fagesia Robusta Campbell, which is bamboo that you might have heard me recommend before. But if you're new to my channel, if you don't know a lot about bamboo, the only thing that you might have heard of are the horror stories. That bamboos are an invasive plant that can take over your whole garden. They're a plant that can take a digger to remove, something that you definitely wouldn't want anywhere near your garden. But if I just want to put that right really, and say that bamboos, they are a cracking choice for any garden, as long as you choose the right variety. And the main thing is to choose a clumper. Fargesias are clumping bamboos, and Fargesia robusta Campbell, it's a nice tidy bamboo that grows predictably. Sure, it will grow, and that small plant will probably get to around a couple of meters across at the base. You need to allow for that, but it's quite an upright bamboo. It won't flop over and take over your whole garden. It's quite well behaved in that respect. If you're really restricted space-wise and you want to keep the plant controlled, then you can use a bamboo barrier, or you might hear it called a rhizome barrier. And that's basically thick plastic that you dig in around the plant, preferably before you put it into the ground, that just actually controls how wide it can grow. But the truth is, if you've got the space, you don't need one for the Fargesias, because they're physically not going to run. They're not a plant that's just going to disappear under the ground and pop into your neighbour's garden. They're not going to come up through concrete, anything like that. They're not going to become unmanageable beasts with three inch thick canes that just appear through your living room floor. None of that's going to happen. And if you just listen to the horror stories, then you're missing out on a fantastic group of plants. Here in the UK, a plant that's evergreen, that grows quickly, that can be used as an ideal sort of screening plant, that can be used as a specimen plant in the middle of a lawn, that can be a plant that grows fast to give vertical upright sort of space without taking up too much at the bottom. A plant like that is very valuable and bamboos bring all of that. As long as you plant them in the right spot, you give them the space to expand, then they're a fantastic plant that brings so much to garden all year round. Here in the garden, I've used bamboos as backdrops to other plants. I've got specimens like this that can really hold their own in the garden. I use them as a wind defense at the far end of the garden to shelter the rest of the big leaves from those really harsh winds. Or as you can see today, it's definitely a work in progress. But for Fagesia Robusta Campbell, it also works great as a hedge. You can control the height of it by chopping those canes back, but just be aware that the new culms that push through those the following spring, they'll also need cutting back. But they're a very easy plant to grow. They don't have huge water requirements like some of the big timber bamboos can. And like I said, they can grow in shade, they can grow in sun. They're so versatile, so easy to grow. And an evergreen plant that really brings a certain something to your garden. It brings a kind of exotic flair that works great whether you've got a tropical jungle style garden like here, whether you've got a Japanese garden, or whether you just enjoy growing a variety of really interesting foliage and flowering plants. So bamboos, they're not something to be afraid of, and if you want a nice easy one to start with, that won't need a huge amount of care, that's not gonna drink your dry of water, and that potentially at a push, you could even grow in a large pot, Fargesia Robusta Campbell is my number one choice. So that's it for today, five evergreen plants that grow absolutely fantastically in an exotic garden, or in any kind of garden for that matter. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, drop me a comment below, if any sort of evergreen choices that I've missed out that you think absolutely deserve to be in there. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.